Hey everyone. So before we go too far, I wanted to take a minute to really establish where I was before we started on this little excursion. This video is going to tell you things like my fasting blood sugar, my resting blood pressure, my weight, my measurements, even the biomarkers from the labs that I had drawn last week. Now, another test that I had run was by a company called Inside Tracker, based out of Massachusetts. Now, with Inside Tracker, they take your blood typically at a Quest Diagnostics or similar blood lab, and then they're going to evaluate the blood and then provide you a roadmap to a better and healthier you. So the test that I had run was called Inner Age. And the goal of inner age is to evaluate various biomarkers in your blood to determine whether your biological age matches your calendar age. So the description on their website is as follows. Your inner age is a measure of your biological age, that is, your internal age. It takes into account how well your body is working given your calendar age using a group of biomarkers known to influence longevity. Your inner age can be up to 24 years older or younger than your calendar age. So specifically, there are five biomarkers that the inside tracker people measure to determine your inner age. Those biomarkers are HSCRP, that's high sensitivity C-reactive protein. I'd never heard of this one before, but then again, I'm not a doctor. But this test is meant to be a measurement of the amount of inflammation in your body. Anything over three milligrams per deciliter is considered high. Anything over 10 milligrams per deciliter could indicate acute inflammation or infection. Mine, 10 milligrams. Based on my chronic knee pain and Achilles tendinopathy, I would agree. Sucks to be me. The next thing they measure is your vitamin D. Now, low vitamin D can lead to excessive weight gain, high fasting blood sugars, poor mental health, slower reaction times, and impaired coordination. They recommended that my vitamin D be between 32 nanograms per milliliter and 100 nanograms per milliliter. Mine, 23 nanograms. Stupid indoors and lack of sunshine. Ugh. The next item up for review is testosterone since I'm a dude. I believe it's DHEA for women. But for men, low testosterone can make you feel tired, uninterested in sex, and reduce your athletic performance. For me, they recommended that mine be between 536.8 nanograms per deciliter and 1,100 nanograms per deciliter. Mine was way down at roughly 213 nanograms per deciliter. But, I mean, that... Like, that doesn't mean that, like, you know, my sex drive is, is low. Moving on, the fourth item on the list is glucose, or blood sugar. Now, most people know what glucose is and the correlated risks between high glucose and diabetes. I was actually shocked because I test my blood sugar regularly, and it was surprisingly low on the day I had my test done. I've been dieting off and on for the past few months, but it's still rather my fasting blood sugar is below 105 milligrams per deciliter. This morning it was 111 milligrams per deciliter. But the day of the test, 76 milligrams per deciliter. Right in my sweet spot between 65 and 80 milligrams per deciliter. Lastly, they look at ALT, or alanine aminotransferase. That's another one I had never heard of, in case you couldn't tell. ALT is a liver enzyme that helps change stored glucose into chemical energy, apparently. Mine was 13 units per liter, and since my optimum range was between 9 and 23 units per liter, I was in the sweet spot. All in all, I scored way better than I expected. In calendar years, I am 39.8 years old. I expected for my inner age to be somewhere between 45 years old and roughly 110. But I was shocked. I'm actually 41.7 years old according to the test run by inner age. That's pretty good. I mean, it's higher than my actual age, but not by near what I thought it would be. So now my goal is to get that number down into the mid 30s or mid 20s. 22. 22 is a good year. <laughs> That's a good year. 
Now to move on to the rest of the measurements. These are the ones that I'll be tracking on a week to week basis. All right, first off is weight. Now I wasn't exactly shocked this morning whenever I rolled onto the scale and saw the number that popped up. 295.4 pounds. Now let me put this into context for you, okay? That's roughly equal to 1,000 quarter pounders with cheese or 215 basketballs or one baby elephant. If that baby elephant were also carrying a baby hippopotamus, okay? Not great. Doesn't do much to make one feel good about themselves. Now, my resting blood pressure this morning was 132 over 92, which according to the American Heart Association is stage two hypertension nearing stroke levels. So again, not good, all right? This isn't something that one should strive for. But the one that irks me the most is my body fat percentage, 45.4%. That means 45.4% of that 295.4 pounds is blubber. A blue freaking whale, which is the fattest species on the planet, is only 35% body fat. So come to find out, if somebody calls me a whale, it's an insult to the whale, like legitimately. So the rest of my measurements, including my BMI, waist measurements, hip measurements, neck measurements, etc., can be found in the video description below. Now, sometimes people ask me just how I got this big, and my answer is always the same. Very easily. Now, if you're familiar with the Joe Rogan podcast, then you're probably also familiar with Dr. Rhonda Patrick and her website, foundmyfitness.com. Now, if you get your DNA tested by something like 23andMe, then you can take that raw genetic data and run it through foundmyfitness.com and get all kinds of extra information that you don't get from 23andMe. So I did that, and according to Dr. Rhonda Patrick's website, I have several genetic markers that leave me genetically predisposed to obesity. But that's kind of a cop-out. I don't want to say, oh, well, I'm genetically predisposed to being fat. Like, come on, take responsibility for your actions. I said to me, yeah, why is it that I'm the way I am? Because I love food. I love food that tastes great, and I like to eat a lot of it. All right, great food in great quantities equals a happy fat man. And that equals, well, body fat percentages higher than that of the common blue whale. So exactly how much are we talking about? I'm glad you asked. I decided to track what I ate over the course of a typical day and show it to you. Now, keep in mind, this isn't showing off. These aren't record setting numbers for me. This is average. This lunch, is something that I've been known to have two to three days in a week. So on this particular day, I decided to skip breakfast and just had a cup of coffee. I'd gotten used to intermittent fasting a couple of years ago and I've just stuck with it because I really like the way that I feel whenever I'm fasted in the morning. Now sometimes I don't fast and instead I'll stop and grab two or three Boston cream donuts and a large super sugary iced coffee on my way home from taking my daughter to school. But this time I didn't do that. I just had a cup of coffee with some half and half. Turns out it was the only good decision I made that day. But don't worry, I made up for it at lunch. Now for lunch I had just a plain fried chicken sandwich and a large fry. Now I don't want to eat my chicken sandwich dry because I'm not a psychopath. So I needed some sweet and sour sauce. I love a fried chicken sandwich just slathered in sweet and sour sauce. And to be honest, if we can take a detour here, I don't know why there's not a restaurant in the world that actually sells this delicious concoction, but somebody should be getting on this, all right? I'll take a nickel for every sandwich sold. Oh, thank you. But if we can roll back, I needed to get some sweet and sour sauce. So of course I ordered a large chicken nugget and got a couple of sweet and sour sauces with that. Then. I got a large diet soda. Why a diet soda, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked that. It's because health is important, people. It really is. 
but also because then I could feel good enough to get a dessert, which in this case consisted of a large cookies and cream milkshake with whipped cream on top and a cherry because cherries are fruit. Fruits are healthy. Health is important, people. Now for dinner, we opted for cheeseburgers, so I got my usual, which is a half pound cheeseburger, another large fry, and another large diet soda. Again, because uh, health is important, people. I decided not to get my usual dessert, which would have been cookies and a hot fudge sundae, but just mostly because I knew my wife would glare at me. <laughs> Whitman. Luckily, I skipped breakfast and I skipped dessert for dinner, so my grand total came up to just be a measly 3,823 calories with 37% of those coming from carbohydrates and 46% of them coming from fat. And that's a normal day for me. It really is. My record is somewhere over 6,000 calories in a day. And unless you're Michael Phelps, you don't need to be eating 6,000 calories in a day. I don't care how delicious the food is. And that is how I got to where I am. To be honest, it's a little embarrassing to share, but that's all right. That's the past. And now we're on to bigger and better things. Or should I say, we're on to thinner and better things. <laughs> hey, shut up. I'm a dad. I, I'm entitled to dad jokes. That's it for now, but each week I will continue to post new videos, which will include my updated weight and measurements on a week-to-week -week basis, but we'll also get into the specifics of what exactly I'm doing, what diet I'm on, what exercises I'm using, what supplements I'm taking, the whole works. But for tomorrow, I'm planning on posting something new, an unboxing video for my kit from mydnh.com. Now, I'll show you exactly how the kit works, give you some pointers on how to use it, and we'll talk a little bit about what exactly we're measuring with the kit. Now, as always, I'd appreciate it if you'd give me a like, subscribe, follow the channel, and post in the comments down below. Tell me in the comments, what was your worst day? What was your culinary rock bottom? What did you eat and how did it convince you that you needed to make a change in your life for the better? Let me know in the comments, and until next time, let's keep the discussion going. Later, guys.